The reason for my presentation today is that I'm concerned. I'm concerned when I go to grain industry forums, it's quite often said that by grain leaders in Australia that if we could design the deregulated market we have today, it would look nothing like we have today. I have concerns about that because when I look back in history, the farmers did design the market. They designed it by default. They used, they became politically active in hard times, which caused a political response. That's my concern and I think at times we need to look back on history and gain an understanding of it so we don't adopt those, those processes or uh, interventions that failed in the past. The title of my talk today could easily be Wheat Regulation, a Western perspective with all its machinations. Farmers, not all but many, believe the source of their success is government but they also believe the source of their failures is also government. I believe that government has a very important role, just not in the marketplace. A little bit about myself. I'm a farmer, predominantly a growing farmer, as Steve said, in Cundon in the central wheat belt of Western Australia. I farm with my wife, Julie, my two daughters, and my mum and dad. I'm passionate about biotechnology and the benefits that can bring agriculture as you can see in this slide today, I was trying to convince the then Premier, Mr Colin Barnett in Western Australia of the merits of repealing a GM moratoria so we could develop a frost tolerant wheat. And he was under duress because he just approved frost to uh, GM canola and the backlash was quite intense. So we had an interesting conversation, but to his great credit, he did repeal that moratoria, which, which means that we've got GM canola with a little bit more certainty. Uh, I'm a, we're long-time members of the Pastoralists and Graziers Association in Western Australia, known as the PGA, believes in free markets, small government, property rights and individual responsibility. These val values f reflect mine. Now, I'm going to do a little bit of Economics 101 here. I believe competition is dynamic. The next four dot points I'm going to relate to the grain industry that we have today in Western Australia and Australia reduces costs. In my presentation today, I'm going to quickly look at two royal commissions that occurred in the wheat industry, one in Western Australia in 1933 and the McColl Royal Commission in 1988. The reason for these two royal commissions was that the farmer was being crippled by supply chain costs. And it was to look into that and provide the industry recommendations. The two royal commissions, interestingly, provided completely different recommendations to government. Competition increases choice. Since deregulation of the wheat industry, the West Australian grain farmer has many buyers he can sell to on any given day. It improves efficiency. Since deregulation, if I can relate to our own circumstances in Western Australia, cooperative bulk handling has become more efficient. It's not because it's facing increased competition, it's the threat of competition that drives CBH now. The formation of cluster industries. I have travelled in up country in the east coast and I have seen the formation of cluster industries evolve. Uh, that's something that the West Australian marketplace could really, uh, will really needs, up country investment in bulk handling facilities and uh, more end use for our grain. Unfortunately, given the high the low population of Western Australia, uh, that development of upcountry end use is, is very slow. You might ask, who's this chap? Is he relevant to the grain in industry in Australia? Well, not directly. His name is Rudyard Kipling. He was born in 1865 and died in 1936. He was an English journalist, a short story writer, poet and novelist. He's relevant because he lived at a time when the wheat industry industry developed land at an incredible rate and growers were learning quickly that many perils existed. He wrote a famous poem called If. A most compelling line in the poem, if you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two imposters the same. If farmers had treated these two imposters the same, I wonder how our grain industry would look today. It's easy to envisage in Western Australia 
my local industry, that we would have developed competitive bulk handling versus a pit permitted monopoly, but they didn't. This book verifies my claim. Now, not many of you would have read this book because it is quite rare. But the book, A Shared Harvest, written by Greg Withwell and Diane Sydenham, is a wonderful history of Australian wheat farming, including the expansion, hardship, innovation and entrepreneurship. But it also provides a thorough timeline of political activism by farmers that rose during hard times and waned in the good. A strong theme throughout the book is the rising costs that farmers face, which cause much consternation. A reduction on, on costs occurred, interestingly, on farm, from innovations, the stripper, the st stump jump plough, and then the combine harvester revolutionised farming practices and were all Australian inventions that played a significant uh, role globally. But again, the theme of the book is farmers sought protection from the market, even though they knew they were sellers into an already competitive market. This chart simply amazes me. It's the history of statutory marketing in Australia. It started in 1904, statutory marketing. The first authority was set up and most were established after World War II. Interestingly, in 1980, Two, Australia had 61 marketing boards. These boards were usually established after a referendum of producers. I believe it comforted growers by knowing that their neighbour and all producers that produced that commodity were forced to sell their produce to the board and receive the same price. The overwhelming objective of marketing boards was to stabilise price because growers sought protection from volatility. Marketing authority schemes evolved to add guaranteed minimum export prices, as was the case in wheat and wool. Arguments used to keep statutory marketing was the ability to generate premiums above export parity, as Australia was selling as a monopoly. But it's really difficult to find any evidence to support this claim. A major disadvantage of these authorities was that it stopped innovation and entrepreneurship and the incentive to find new markets. Most of these marketing boards have been disbanded. More intervention. In 1933, the West Australian State Government established a Royal Commission into Bulk Handling, which, which was in its infancy then. After reading many submissions and evidence from 90 farmers, I'm amazed at the thoroughness of this investigation. It is a fantastic uh, history of early, the early days of bulk handling in Western Australia. The overarching reason for the Royal Commission was to scrutinise the West Farmers' proposal, which essentially was requesting permission to run a monopoly bulk handling scheme underwritten by the taxpayers of Western Australia. There's plenty of evidence to suggest that concerns within government departments and political leaders over the granting of monopoly for grain bulk handling existed. West Farmers established cooperative bulk handling to alleviate these concerns. If I move on to the recommendations, there were five and they were largely adopted. Number one and five are the most relevant. Number one, that CBH be permitted to run a statewide bulk handling scheme. And number two, that legislation be enacted to provide protection for all those vitally interested in the bulk handling of wheat. Those recommendations established a monopoly bulk handler in Western Australia. Now, I must admit, the growers did want that. In those uh, submissions and interviews by growers, most growers were only concerned about reducing the cost of labour. Bulk handling was a revelation. That's what they were interested in. They didn't realise that they were going to also end up with a monopoly. Many farmers, interestingly, wanted competition, more competition between grain merchants. The next Royal Commission and the most important investigation into the Australian wheat industry was the McColl Royal Commission. It was established on the 13th of October 1986 by the then Minister for Primary Industries, John Kerrin. The reasons were the, for the Royal Commission were the lack of competition and high costs burdening farmers at the time. The Commission found that the Australian grain industry did not meet the criteria for economic efficiency cost-effectiveness and integration. 
In his forward, Commissioner McColl described, described the Royal Commission process using a Machiavellian quote. It must be remembered that there is nothing more difficult to plan or more dangerous to manage than the creation of a new system. For the initiator has the enmity of all who would profit from the preservation of the old institution and merely lukewarm defenders in those that would gain by the new ones. The findings from the Royal Commission were that growers sought more efficiency. They, were, they demanded it, but interestingly, they demanded it by different means. The marketing boards demanded the status quo. Well, we're not surprised by that. The bulk handlers supported the retention of sole receiver rights. We're also not surprised by that. Cooperative bulk handling in Western Australia was surprised that their efficiency was even in question. The, the, the recommendations from the Royal Commission were that a competitive environment was a solution to the institutional inefficiencies and that there was a great need for more competition in bulk handling services. I applaud Commissioner, Mac Mac Commissioner McColl's recommendation. On reflection and analysis, a number have not eventuated, but many have, which has set the wheat and grain industry in Australia on a contestable pathway. Unsurprisingly, many grower groups complained of the costs in the system, but generally defaulted to supporting a beefed up central management. McColl had seen many decades of inefficiencies which just needed change. He didn't want more of the same. Where are we today? Well, I don't claim to be an expert on the Eastern States grain industry, but I have sought a basis comparison between uh, the US and Australia back in February, and a, a well-known grain consultant in Eastern Australia says that the Eastern States grower in the deregulated market is $30 better off than his competitor in the US. And this has led to obviously putting more money in farmers' pockets, but it has led to the emergence of a significant cluster industry forming around the supply chain in Eastern Australia. Having travelled with Bungie into upcountry southern New South Wales and Victoria to see private on-farm storages and private collective storages, storages competing with Grain Corp, I came home a little envious at the competition that exists for grain in those regions. In Western Australia, we do have a competitor. Uh, Bungie has built a small export facility at the port of Bunbury about 200 kilometres south of Perth. Uh, it taps into existing infrastructure and you can see the brown um, bulk uh, uh, produce there is actually wood chips. So Bungie, through an arrangement, has tapped into that existing infrastructure. It's a truck only receival port, complemented by two um, upcountry sites. This has been fantastic for our industry in Western Australia. Whilst it hasn't uh, changed the whole of the four zones for farmers, those that farm behind Bunbury are reaping the rewards of competition. Obviously, we also have a legacy bulk handler in CBH. CBH provides a very good service to those who patronise the system and its members. It communicates daily with growers and uh, any problems that arise within the uh, CBH system can be addressed by farmers. But it does benefit immensely by large harvests, allowing it to pay substantial rebates. These rebates are from essentially overcharging and then after 12 months are repaid back to growers who've patronised the system. CBH also benefits by being the fortunate recipient of tax exemptions because it's a registered charity. And that could be a question that growers could ask CBH because does this uh, status affect its commercial performance? Whilst our industry is not perfect in the West, there is no doubt that it's freer than it ever has been any time before. I don't believe there's any place for industry-specific government regulations in Western Australia that, it, that could improve the farm gate returns for Western Australian growers. And if we look at the basis chart for Western Australian wheat since deregulation, the black line, horizontal line, shows that since deregulation, the basis has been tracking at $27 a tonne above seed bot. This was not possible in a regulated market. 
Even at decile two, the yellow horizontal line, which is averaging $10 a tonne, in a regulated market, having that premium was rare. More often than not, our basis in Western Australia was in negative territory, certainly outside of the harvest months. Deregulation's been good, but in Western Australia, we only have it in the marketing space, essentially. Where are, where are growers today across the nation? Well, interestingly, it's, it's, it's hard to know, but a survey was done in 2015. The findings were unsurprising, but I, spoke, but I believe the responses are more philosophical than any analysis of the market. Two thirds of growers still feel that de de deregulation hasn't been a benefit. They feel that deregulation hasn't been a benefit. I think it would be an interesting question to ask growers if they again would support all growers be forced into orderly marketing arrangements. This photo represents an example of an ongoing debate in, a, in the Australian wheat industry, a debate that I believe is unnecessary. Is commingled grain in a stack with different owners private or public information? In Western Australia, like on the East Coast, we are private growers of grain who choose to store their grain in a private facility. What the crux of the argument is that we would receive a benefit if we um, publicly displayed our stock si situation throughout uh, the year. But in Western Australia, growers go long on grain at harvest time, so divulging our stocks information would give an advantage that we have obtained since deregulation to the marketers. Now, the marketers won't use it to my advantage, they'll use it to theirs. I believe that markets need an element of uncertainty. I don't believe you can have perfect competition. I believe the market is made up of millions of decisions every day. A well-known grain consultant in Western Australia said to me only recently, the only way any benefit could possibly be generated out of such a, a, a program would be to then set up a reciprocal office in the Black Sea region and ask all those that participate in the grain market there to volunteer accurate information to a platform. Unlikely, I would have thought. Again, this is growers wanting to design the market. And sadly, growers do yearn to regulate the behaviour of our legacy bulk handlers. I believe that our bulk handlers were designed by growers because of politics, and we need to accept them because they play a significant role in the Australian grain industry, but we need to challenge them with more competition. Lastly, I would like to pay tribute to two great mates and mentors, Leon Bradley and Gary McGill. Gary's with us today in the audience. But we sadly lost Leon just over a year ago to cancer after a long and courageous battle. Both men in Western Australia and then Australia argued for a deregulated export market. In their distinctive ways, they forged that argument against a backdrop that Mc Commissioner McCall described so well that those institutions with the most to lose resisted the most. I believe history will judge kindly those that argued for deregulation, and there were many on the East Coast. The future of our wheat and grain industry is so bright if we can keep it free of unnecessary regulation and politics, which will inevitably create an environment for competitive investments. I will now conclude my presentation by again thanking ABES for the opportunity, and especially Rowan Nelson for his encouragement and guidance. Researching for this presentation has given me a deeper understanding of the wheat and grains industry in Australia, and I hope I've been able to impart some of that understanding onto you all today. Thank you all for listening.